Okay. We learned a few definitions about slope and how to calculate slope. We define slope as the steepness of a line or the steepness of anything, right? If something's got a really high slope, like a big number, and it's very steep. Right? And if it's got a really low number, it's not steep at all. Right? It's pretty flat. So slope is the measure of the steepness of a line. Fantastic. We define slope, uh, especially using a picture. We defined it as the vertical change divided by the horizontal change. But we didn't call it vertical change or horizontal change. We called it rise and run. Right? So slope is the ratio of the vertical change called the rise. That's how high up you have to go to the next point. Over the horizontal change, that's how far left or right you had to go. We called that the run. Rise over run. We then had positive and negative slopes. Right? So we could look at a picture with a line and know if the slope was going to be positive or negative just by the way that it was going from left to right. If it was increasing, so if it went from left to right and it was doing this, going upwards, that was called a positive slope. If it was decreasing from left to right, so a picture that would look like this. As you go left to right, it's going down. We had that as a negative slope. There were then two special cases which we really couldn't calculate. Um, we could technically, but it was kind of confusing. The two special cases were lines that were perfectly flat, horizontal lines, and lines that were straight up and down, that were vertical lines. Horizontal lines, we said, had a slope of zero. The reason it had a slope of zero was because there was no rise, right? So it would be zero divided by a number, zero divided by any number, it would always be zero. That's why a horizontal number was defined that way. The vertical lines were the trickier ones, so lines that go straight up and down. We have no way of describing that slope and the steepness of that thing. It's like being on the edge of a cliff. It's just straight down. It doesn't make any sense when you talk about the steepness of it. We call that undefined. There was no real way to mathematically describe it. It's almost like an insult, but you can't really describe it. Awesome. And then if you had slopes, uh, lines, points are all on the same line, so for instance, we had a line like this. We had line A, or point A, point B, and point C. We would say that the slopes between all those lines would be the same. Right? The slope from A to B is the same as B to C, which is the same as A to C. Right? It's all the same because it's all on the same line. So the slopes of all the line segments on a line are equal. All the same thing. Those are the definitions that we had learned last week, right before the weekend. We then learned how to actually calculate slope. So we're going to do a couple of questions right here. Um, we're just going to calculate the slope of these lines. We're not going to worry too much about all this other test. We're just going to calculate the slopes. So we have three lines here. We have line A to B, we have line C to D, we have line E to F. We're going to calculate the slopes of all those lines. And to calculate the slopes of all those lines, we choose two points on each graph. So looking at A to B, I would say this is a good point to pick. Because it's right on the intersection of one of those grids. And this. You could pick two other points as long as you're on that line. Then to calculate the slope, we always start on the furthest left point. So we're always working left to right. We then figure out how high we have to go. In our case, we have to go up one and then over two. We call that rise when we went up by one and run when we went over by two. Our slope for that line would be rise over run, one divided by two. This one is, I'm just going to put them all over here. A, B equals 1 over 
Yeah. You could. So you could go this direction. So you could go from this point to this point. Except if you go down, that's negative one. And if you go left, it's negative two. So the perk of going from left to right is I always use positives. If you go right to left, you have to use negative when you go left, um, which sometimes confuses people. So that's why I always try to go left, right, and always keep it positive. However, it still works out the same, right? A negative divided by a negative would turn into a positive. So you're definitely still right. Awesome. Let's look at CD. So pick two points on CD. I'm going to pick this as a perfect point. The only other perfect point is right there. Right on the end of the line. I like to work from the left point to the right point. From the left point, I have to go down three. That's negative three because it went down. The run is to the right, which means my run is positive. It's one, two, three, four. Positive four. You rise over run to be negative three over four. You get your third line over there. We're going to find two points on it. I'm going to take this one right here and this one right here. You rise over run. Give it a shot on your own. Try to calculate the rise. Try to calculate the run. You should go three up and one to the right. Your eyes over run would then be three divided by one. We would just find that to be three. <coughs> right, we don't have to write by one on a number. It's kind of implied. Fantastic. I think rise over run works perfect for pictures. Okay, that's when we utilize rise over run. Where I literally just count out the balls. It's good for pictures. Unfortunately, we don't always have pictures. In fact, a lot of the time we don't have pictures. We just get given points, and then you have to try to figure out the rise and the run. You could technically like draw the picture if you wanted to. Uh, it might be a little tedious and a little long. So there is a better way. All right, rise over run, good for pictures. If you don't have pictures, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to use something called the slope formula. Okay, this is the slope formula. It will be provided to you on okay. This thing calculates slope. You'll notice that they said that the slope formula was M. We had to talk about this, but M means slope. So in math, if you're gonna see the letter M, that means the slope of something. Awesome. This formula then has y2 minus y1. What that means is the y value from your second point subtract the y value from your first point. Divided by x2, x1. That's the x value of your second point, x value of your first point. If you calculate that, it would give you your slope of a line. It's the mathematical way of doing rise over run. We're going to do an example right here so you can see what it looks like. Um, let's just stretch this out for a second. Then just use this formula a little differently. I don't want to see your formula. It says find the slope of a line which passes through points G and H. So if you want to find the slope between two points, that's what it's asking for. What I do is I call one of my points point one and one of my points point two. It doesn't matter which one you choose. Let's just call this one point one because it came first. If this is point one, then this is x1. That's the x value of point one. And this is y1. That's the y value point one. You then move to the second point, and you would call it x2y. Once you've named your points, point, point two, you can use your newfound slope formula, this guy right here. All you have to do is plug the values. So when it says y2, 
you would look over here and you go negative 2. Minus y1. y1 is 8. Divided by x2. The goal we labeled 0.2, that would be 7. Minus x1, in our case, negative 3. You'll notice that you're going to end up on these questions with like double negatives. You're going to have subtract a negative number like this right here. So in your calculator, maybe you just put brackets around that negative 3 to help you out. I would not try to calculate that all in one go. I would calculate the top and then I calculate the bottom separately. If you put it all in at once, there's a good chance your calculator just screws up something along the way. Okay, so what I would do is I would calculate the top. I would go negative 2 minus 8 is negative 10. And then I would calculate the bottom 7 minus negative 3 is positive 10. And then I could calculate my slope because that's a to put in my calculator. Negative 10 divided by 10 equals negative 1. This thing has a slope of negative 1. To describe slope, instead of saying the slope between g and h, we would just say mgh right there. That means slope from g to h. All right, just so you can see the shorthand wording of things. And that's definitely how you're going to see it on test. Right, they're not going to say find the slope between g and h. They're just going to put mgh. And you're going to have to know that means to figure out the slope. Fantastic. This question um, is going to show us some common mistakes people make when trying to use the slope formula. So it says Eleanor, Bonnie, and Carl are calculating the slope of a line segment with endpoints e and f. Their work is shown below. So you see all three of them did it differently. All three of them have different answers. Or at least they look like different answers. We're going to try to figure out who's right or if any of them are right, and who's wrong, and where they went wrong. We'll start off with Eleanor. All right. It looks like they use the slope formula. Because you got numbers divided by numbers that are subtracting each other. We know the formula would be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. If we look at Eleanor's work, okay, if we look at Eleanor's work, she starts off with negative 10 minus 15. If I'm looking at where those numbers came from, my guess is they came from right here. Negative 10, 15. Those are x values. She has them on the top. The top has to be y values, can't be x values. So that is a big mistake right there. She has her x and her y flip. Very common mistake, right? People just start going on their formula, they mess up which one's x, which one's y. Make sure you're just careful, that's all. y goes on the top, x goes on the bottom. Looking over at Bonnie. Bonnie fixed that mistake. So she didn't do the same thing. You'll notice she has y values on the top. That's one of them. 6 minus 8. That means she said 6 was y2, 8 was y1. Then at the bottom, she has 15 minus negative 10. That means she has 15 as x2. And she has negative 10 as x1. And you'll notice that she's reversed her, her second point. So looking at this, notice that her x1 and y2 are both coming from the same point. That's not possible. You name one of your points point 0.1, you name one of your points point 0.2, this has to be x1, y1, x2, y2. They have to be on the same pair. She's got them reversed. She either has to flip her y's or flip her x's to make it. That's the biggest mistake that we see. Okay, so when I've marked these tests and assignments and quizzes, that is definitely the number one mistake people make. They screw up on their labeling. This needs to be x2, y2 coming from the same point. x1, y1 from the same point. 
and to achieve that big one. If we look at Carl, Carl fixes that mistake. So he does a little bit better. Um, he has his points labeled properly. So it looks like he's labeled point. Uh, he goes 8 minus 6. That means he's got this is point 2, this is point 1. He's got 15 minus 10. That means he's got that's point 2, that is point 1. But there's something wrong with the denominator. He's missing the negative, right? So the formula is x2 minus x1. This should have been 15 minus negative 10. So it should have been 15 plus 10, right? It should have been double negative. Just be careful with negatives. Okay? If there's a negative, make sure the negatives also go into your formula. So all three of these guys were actually wrong. Um, the answer should have been 2 divided by 25, but it should have been positive 2 divided by 25. Awesome. All three are wrong. We've seen why all three are wrong. Those are probably the three most common mistakes, especially Bonnie's. Bonnie's is consistently happening. Just be careful with those things. Right. Uh, collinear point. Collinear is a definition that I don't know if I ever use it beyond. Ah, no, that's a lie. I use the term collinear in grade 12. Um, in grade 11, we probably never talk about collinear. But collinear is a definition that you will to know in this class. Collinear means that three things are all on the same line. If all three things are on the same line, we've already talked about this, it means that they all have the same slope, correct? However, you can have things with the same slope that aren't on the same line. So if you look at this example right here, if you were to measure the slope from D to E, from here to here. It would be the exact same slope as F to G. The reason being is those things have the same steepness. They don't care a lot. So you would have learned that, right? In grade 9, 8, eight one or the other. Um, the parallel lines are lines that run right beside each other. Mathematically, it means they have the same slope. It means that they have the same steepness. So if you were to calculate these slopes, they would end up the same, but these are not collinear points. Because collinear points have to be on the same line. Looking at these three points, P, Q, R. If I check the slope from P to Q, it would be the exact same as the slope from Q to R. And they're collinear because they all connect in a nice line. That's the difference between just having the same slope and being collinear. Awesome. That means that if I were to look at this, my slope and mean slope from Q to R is equal to my slope from P to Q. Which is equal to my slope from P to R. That's the definition of collinear. And no matter what points you pick, all the slopes would be equal. For parallel lines, that wouldn't happen. From D to E is the same as F to G. However, it's not the same as D to G. And that would be a different slope. Fantastic. What questions look like this? Like that. Consider points A, B, and C. Prove that A, B, and C are collinear. If they're collinear, that means that the slope from A to B must equal the slope from B to C, which must equal the slope a to C. That's what collinear means. 
the slopes of all the points must be the same. Realistically, if you prove two of them, the third one is also true. Okay, so we don't need to prove all three of these. We just need to prove two of them. So let's try to prove this portion of our little formula. If they're collinear, that must be true. Let's check it out. So the slope from A to B. We look at our question, A, B, we need one of them point 0.1, one of them point 0.2. Let's see, this is point 0.1. X1, Y1. Let's say this is point 0.2. X2, Y. Oh, that did not like it. Once you've labeled your points point 0.1, point 0.2, you can use your formula. You're going to go y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. y2 is 6 minus y1 is negative 3. 6 minus negative 3. Divided by x2 minus x1. x2 is 2 minus x1 is 5. My suggestion is to calculate them separately. Figure what the numerator is, figure what the denominator is. Look at the numerator. 6 minus negative 3 would be positive 9. Divided by, on the bottom, 2 minus 5 is negative 3. And then you can simplify that fraction if you want to. 9 divided by negative 3 equals negative If these lines are collinear, then my slope I just calculated, which is m from a to b, should be the exact same as my slope as b to c. Right? That's what we're trying to prove. We've only figured out half of our formula. Now let's figure out the slope from b to c. To do that, I would relabel my points. Like you reset the whole process. So I used to say this was point one and point two. I'm going to get rid of that, and now I'm going to label my points all over again to try to figure out the slope. You see, I'm going to say this is point one, x one, point two is going to be c. I my formula. Y2 minus Y1. I said that 33 was point Y2, 6 was Y1, so I have 33 minus 6. Divided by X2 minus one X2 is negative 7, minus X1 is 2. Calculate the numerator separately, denominator separately. 33 minus 6 would be 27. Divided by negative 7 minus 2 to negative 9. Now at first glance, those do not seem the same. However, you can simplify that fraction. If you go 27 divided by negative 9 in your calculator, it also equals negative 3. That means the slope from A to B is the exact same as the slope from B to C. That means these things are collinear. And we just prove that they're collinear. You could technically also try to figure out M from A to C, but if two of them are the same, the third one will be the same every single time. It's the only way that would work. So you don't have to actually kill these the third one. I passed. Um, I would always write out. They are collinear. And this is my proof that they are collinear.
Awesome. Part B, they're saying find the value of y if the point D is on the line from A to C. If it's on the same line, that means it's collinear. That's a key to this. If it says on the same line, that means it's collinear. Collinear means it must have the same slope. So our slope using this new point D should still equal negative 3 because it's on the same line signal. What we're going to do is figure out what value of y would make that actually work. To do that, we're going to take another point, let's say point A. And then say we have point A, it's at 5 comma negative 3. Right, just from early in the question, we figured that out. And we have point D, which is at negative 4. Oh man, that board is not like that. There we go. And scroll down. Try to get away from that part of the board. Part D is at negative 4 comma Y. And the slope between those two points should equal negative 3 because it's on the same line. To figure the slope, I call one of these points point 1, one of them point 2. Let's say this is point 1, x1, y1. Let's say this is point 2, x2, y2. And let's try calculating the slope. The formula says take y2, subtract y1. For us, we don't know what y2 is. It's just called y. Then we're going to subtract y1 minus negative 3. Divided by x2 minus x1. x2 is negative 4. x1 is 5. <laughs> People are looking at that. Like, what did you just draw? I used my slope formula with what I have. I didn't have it. If I look at that, I can do some calculations, right? I can't calculate the entire top, but I could combine these two negatives. So instead of saying this is y minus negative 3, I'm just going to simplify it to say it's y plus 3. Divided by on the bottom, I can calculate that. Negative 4 minus 5 is negative 9. So I could calculate that. Cool. Yes. Fantastic. And now we're kind of stuck. Right? We can't calculate that slope right now. But we know what we want that slope to equal. What do we want it to equal? Negative 3, because it has to be collinear. So now we can set up this equation and try to solve that. Some people can solve it yeah, intuitively. They could look at it and be like, oh, y well, has to equal this, and then that fraction would equal negative 3. Some people will need to take that and start over and do a little math work, which is what I think most of us would have to do. So I'm going to take this over right here. I'm going to say y plus 3 divided by 9, negative 9, equals negative 3. And I'm going to try to get y by itself, right? Isolate y. To isolate y, we need to get things to the other side away from it. And you're going to start with getting rid of this negative 9. Right? To get rid of that negative 9, to move it to the other side of the equal sign, we have to do the opposite of whatever operation this is. This is divided by negative 9, so I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 9. When I multiply both sides by negative 9, it'll cancel out on the left. And I'll end up with y plus 3 equals 27.
So I move the negative 9 to the other side. Now I'm closer to getting y by itself, but I'm not quite there. I have y plus 3. I want to do the opposite of plus 3. The opposite of plus 3 would be minus 3. I subtract 3 from both sides. It'll cancel out on the left. On the right, I now have 27 minus 3, which is 24. That means the y value for point D has to be at 24 for it to be collinear like on that line. That is one of the harder things that we would do. <laughs> it's got some abstract thinking, it's got a little bit of uh, challenging math to it, right? but it is something that will be expected of you. So if something is collinear, it's on the same line segment. Means it has the same slope. And that's us finding a number that would make it on the same slope. Fantastic. You have a lot of time um, to practice your newfound slope formula.